In a world dominated by sleek screens and voice commands, why are we still fascinated by tactile experiences? Unlike tapping on a cold, flat screen, touch feels real and directly connects to what we're doing. Listen to this. There's something oddly satisfying about it, right? Like you don't get that same sensation when you're just tapping on a smooth screen. Our fingertips are among the most nerve dense areas, making us naturally lean towards tactile sensations. Our evolution has been molded around the sense of touch, sight and hearing, yes, but especially touch. And modern technology just can't eclipse that entirely. You remember when you could just slam close a clamshell phone just out of frustration to end the call? There's a realness to feeling, and especially through buttons and knobs and switches that just screens can't match. You can still see this trend within cars and other products, because even though with fully configurable touch interfaces, consumers consistently demand buttons. When our fingers are limited to just swiping on screens, they miss out on the world of sensation. Like responsive devices tap into this like natural need for sensory feedback with haptic vibrations and just vibes. <laughs> and it's not just touch, sound plays a part of it too, because of course, clicks and clacks can tap into those same soothing vibes as the gentle rain on a window pane. There's also a link that exists between fidgeting and cognitive function. For some people, rhythmic touch offers comfort and focus. That almost hypnotic feeling of tapping on a pen during a brainstorm session or furiously clicking that pen while daydreaming before someone tells you to knock it off, that repetitive press of a mechanical keyboard feeds into that same need of a rhythm and trance-like focus. So if people feel calmer after using a keyboard or a certain macro pad or device for buttons, that's a win. Tactile inputs aren't just for fun. Many, especially those visually impaired, pressable, feelable, touchable tech inputs are game changers for those with visual challenges. Offers them an accessibility that flat screen just can't give. Despite having laser projected keyboards that we can just imprint on the desk and we can type away, we're still drawn to tangible thuds. But some people might be asking, but why are companies moving away from tactile feedback if touch is so important? I'm sure you've seen a toddler just swipe away on an iPad or a phone, but they would poop themselves if they ever saw a typewriter. But these companies might be banking on the touchscreen smoothness and intuitive feeling it fulfills, but they still make sure to give us something for our natural need for touch. Abandoning tactile feedback, but evolving it without us really noticing it. See, with haptic feedback on our phones and our screens, those tiny vibrations that mimic the feeling of pressing a button, of getting that reciprocal reaction, that's the nod to our touch-driven core. It's like a blend of the past and the future, because even with screens and haptics, at least, there's always just like one or two buttons, switches, or knobs that can always just make it onto the final device. Because again, companies will always continue combining digital and analog and blending like the mechanical with the interactive and just giving life to cold digital devices. And if you've ever felt your gadgets were too cold, not temperature wise, but soul wise, maybe that's why there's an unspoken agreement to keep in touch with our devices. So while you're swiping through life, don't forget to pause and appreciate these tactile treasures all around you.